So now we have the next speaker, uh, Dr. Yan Hu Chen. Dr. Yan Hu Chen is a program officer of the Transportation Program Energy Foundation China, focusing on the electric vehicle and related fuel. Uh, before joining the foundation in November 2017, he worked for the China National Institutes of Standard standardized for nine years in emission reduction and energy conservation standardized research. Uh, so uh, now we are welcome Dr. Chen with the presentation for on EV charging. Um, bây giờ chúng ta sẽ đến với phần trình bày của tiến sĩ Chen. Tiến sĩ Chen này có rất là nhiều năm kinh nghiệm trong cái lĩnh vực uh, phát triển hạ tầng trạm sạc ở Trung Quốc. So please welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your introduction. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, very, it's my uh, pleasure to have this opportunity to uh, uh, share some information about the uh, EV charging infrastructure development in China. And uh, I'm working for uh, Energy Foundation uh, China as introduced by the chair. And the next slide, please. Okay, uh, today I want to uh, share uh, many in three parts. Uh, the first one will be the EV charging infrastructure targets and the achievements in China. And uh, then I want to share something about the current policies uh, which uh, promoted the, uh, the, the, the charging infrastructure installation and operation. And last, and uh, we could uh, discuss some challenges and the opportunities now. Uh, ne next, slide, next slide, please. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Okay, in China, uh, the electric vehicle uh, is called as the new energy vehicle, uh, short as NEVs. So maybe in the following slides, you could see some, uh, some words uh, like EV and NEVs. Uh, they are in the same meaning. Uh, uh, NEV uh, uh, is used mainly in uh, the official documents and the policies in China. And in this slide, uh, there are two figures. The right figure shows the NEV annual sales uh, to September of this year. And uh, you may found that the NEV sales surged this year and uh, the penetration rate has achieved almost uh, uh, 12%. Uh, compared to the uh, uh, up, um, about five percent last year, and uh, and in China the battery electric vehicle dominates the EV market uh, uh, with uh, an uh, eighty uh, percent share. The charging infrastructure grows with the EV market expanding in China. In the uh, left figure, the amount of the charging posts uh, also uh, showed a growing trend in the past. Uh, five years, and uh, now every three uh, electric vehicles in China could be matched with one charging pole. Uh, and uh, uh, if we look at the public uh, charging pole only, uh, uh, every seven uh, uh, electric vehicles matched with one pole. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and. Uh, uh, compared to the uh, 2020 targets uh, for charging infrastructure development in China, uh, the public charging poles exceeded the target uh, by about 60%, uh, uh, while uh, the other two kinds of uh, types of charging poles, uh, which are the private charging poles and the charging poles in working place, uh, still uh, lagged far behind the targets by 2020. Uh, the charging poles in working place achieved about 50% uh, of the target uh, number uh, and the private charging poles in the uh, residential communities only accomplished 30% uh, to 50% of the target. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, how to access the availability of charging poles uh, to serving the EV consumers. 
it is an important, interesting, but also a tough issue for us. Uh, in the official document in China, it used to set a ratio of uh, electric vehicles to charging poles in case of the electric vehicle charged went parks. Uh, but it is found that it doesn't work in all kinds of cases. So uh, cited from uh, cited an example from one of uh, the uh, projects we supported, the ratio of charging stations to gas stations in, uh, in the uh, cities uh, was uh, calculated. And uh, we could find that uh, this ratio in tier one cities has been more than one, uh, which means the electrical vehicle drivers could find the public charging poles as conveniently as the gas station. Uh, and the, uh, the EV penetration rates uh, mainly uh, showed in the uh, right uh, two figures uh, in this slide uh, uh, for electric taxis and the electrical uh, deliverable vehicles uh, respectively in these cities were also higher than those in other cities. Uh, we believe the public charging poles construction is a synergistic process with the immediate deployment. Next slide, please. Uh, and, uh, and the charging poles serve different transport modes in different ways, as many uh, speakers today uh, showed before. And the private electric cars and the heavy duty electric trucks still lack satisfied charging solutions in China. Okay, next slide, please. And this slide, I uh, collected some uh, pictures uh, to show some cases for uh, different kinds of uh, uh, transport mode. Uh, for, for example, we could have found on the upper right, uh, it's, uh, uh, sen uh, it's a centered uh, charging station restricted to the electric buses. And the uh, lower uh, left uh, is, is a, a battery sweeping station for the heavy duty tractor trailer. And the upper right, shows the battery sweeping station for the electric taxi and the ride hauling. And the uh, lower right uh, shows the community charging station for the electric bikes. Uh, uh, one more thing, the electric bikes is not included in the electric vehicle uh, categories in China. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, I'd like to show some uh, 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 policies. Uh, these policies uh, promote the charging infrastructure installation operations in China. Next slide, please. Uh, first of all, oh, sorry. Yes, the national strategy and the targets guide the charging infrastructure development in China. It is very important uh, because uh, uh, these kind of uh, strategy and the targets uh, gave uh, a confidence to the market and the stakeholders. Uh, for instance, the targets for private charging poles and the working place charging poles are set in case of one uh, electric vehicles to one pole in China. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the first uh, uh, national strategy for charging infrastructure uh, was unveiled in 2015. Uh, and the targets to uh, 2020. Uh, after that, a new uh, policy has been prepared for the charging infrastructure development after 2020, uh, which aims to sustain the, in, uh, the electrical vehicle development and the support achieving the goals in the uh, national electrical vehicle plan toward 2065, uh, 2035, sorry. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and under the uh, strategy and the targets, the priority was identified in terms of regions and the charging scenarios in order to ease the beginning. Uh, for regions, uh, the eastern coastal provinces in China uh, were selected to accelerate the charging infrastructure development uh, because uh, these regions has better economy and uh, has higher air uh, quality expectation. So they have stronger motivation to deploy electric vehicles 
uh, uh, and to uh, construct uh, the charging infrastructure. The 2020 targets uh, for uh, this kind of region have been achieved by 2020. Uh, and in the middle provinces of China, demonstrations were uh, encouraged to uh, construct charging poles and uh, uh, deploy electric vehicles. And the other underdeveloped provinces were the third tier region. Um, and the latter two regions uh, couldn't, uh, sorry, haven't achieved their 2020 targets. And uh, uh, for the scenarios, the charging poles restricted to public service electric vehicles on the highest priorities uh, and the targets achieved. And although the charging poles in community and working places were also paid a lot of attention to, uh, but uh, the target hadn't been met uh, by 2020. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, you could find that the public charging poles uh, I mean, the, for all kinds of electric vehicles, also achieved its 2020 targets. And uh, next slide, please. All right, and uh, uh, there are also uh, there were also uh, fiscal and non-fiscal incentive measures. Uh, 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 to jointly support the installation and operation of the charging poles. Uh, for example, the uh, fiscal incentives uh, include the construction of welding uh, and uh, the uh, lower electricity rate in operation and uh, also the uh, charging service fee determined by the public charging company, uh, which could encourage better charging performance and the, the uh, uh, better uh, station uh, side distribution. And the non-fiscal incentives uh, include uh, developing standards for interconnection, uh, smart or the charging, high power charging, and the vehicle to grade. Uh, and also include the requirements for uh, uh, reserving the grid capacity and the electricity supply and parking lots for example, to support 100% charging post installation demand in newly built residential communities. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, finally, I want to uh, read about the local pilots. The local pilots supplement and inspired the national policies as well. Uh, for example, uh, there are uh, some uh, mega cities in China, uh, for example, Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and uh, uh, and these uh, uh, pioneer electric vehicle pilot cities or provinces have been exploring the electric vehicle development pathways and shows the performance. Uh, uh, for example, Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and uh, Hainan province have set the electric vehicle development targets at least the 10 years earlier than the national ones. And uh, so uh, this kind of uh, uh, policies uh, also promoted the uh, charging infrastructure construction operations in uh, these cities or provinces. And uh, these uh, pioneer uh, pilots uh, also uh, supply additional subsidies for the charging station construction and operation. Uh, and uh, another very important uh, driving force is from the air pollution control. The key area for air pollution control are required and subsidized to deploy the electric vehicles and to uh, construct the charging infrastructure. And now the Ministry of Information and, uh, sorry, the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology of China uh, has uh, just issued a, a new pilot to promote the battery sweeping uh, mode uh, 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 for, uh, for the electric vehicle development, especially for the heavy duty commercial vehicles. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, oh, next slide, please. Let's talk about some uh, the, the, the challenges. Uh, 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 we think the first challenge is, the, is that the multiple decision makers and the stakeholders increase the complexi uh, complexity for uh, alignment and action. 
you could see that there are uh, mainly uh, uh, seven ministries in China uh, uh, relating to the charging infrastructure uh, uh, management. Uh, the, uh, the, the red four uh, are the, uh, uh, the most important uh, four uh, ministries. Uh, the National Development Reform and the Commission and, and, and the National Energy Administration uh, is leading the development of the charging infrastructure plans. Uh, and uh, because the uh, uh, charging infrastructure uh, is related to the uh, land using as well as the uh, electricity distribution. Uh, so the uh, Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development, uh, which uh, charge of the urban rural land management and as well as the building code uh, is also very important for the uh, charging infrastructure development in China. Uh, and uh, the Ministry of Transport uh, manage the parking in the uh, city area. So it is also very important for the charging infrastructure development. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, another challenge uh, is uh, the limited successful business mode for public charging service. Uh, most charging service companies are facing difficulty uh, making profits from public charging. Uh, uh, there are, uh, for, for example, according to uh, a statistic result from uh, the uh, Charging Infrastructure Promotion Alliance of China, the time and utilization rates of public charging stations in China are all lower than 15%. It is quite difficult for them to uh, make profits. Uh, there are um, several key reasons, including uh, the poor location due to no development plan or land availability and the high cost uh, 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 coming from the, uh, the, how to say the, the service fee, the parking fee and the electricity price uh, for the consumer uh, and the, the slow char charging for most early installed charging posts compared to the fast uh, charging demand nowadays. And, and uh, uh, and the different charging standards and the low demand for public charging because most early EV owners figure out solutions to install charging poles at home or work and their low range electrical vehicles are just for daily commute, uh, commuting. Uh, okay, next slides, please. Uh, and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, and as mentioned above, uh, because the urbanization in China is a pacing growing, um, there are old and modern communities distributing crossly in the urban area uh, of the uh, Chinese mega cities. So the charging posts are difficult to install in the older communities, uh, like what the right photo shows, as there are limited parking spots and uh, uh, and the poor power distribution load. Uh, according to the uh, China uh, uh, Charging Infrastructure Promotion Alliance standard stake, about 30% uh, of the private electric vehicle consumers didn't have their private charging poles. Uh, okay, next slide, please. So facing such challenges, what can we do? Uh, uh, we believe first one, we could develop charging infrastructure strategies and uh, plans that integrate the electric vehicle development with the technology innovation, urban planning, and the grid development. It is very important. Uh, uh, and, the, the, and the second, we could conduct local pilots to demonstrate uh, the successful charging infrastructure uh, uh, models uh, for replication. And the last, we need to promote the research and the deployment of innovation technologies, such as the high power charging, smart battery charging, as well as the uh, vehicle grid integration technologies. Okay, thanks for slides. Okay, thank you for your attention and the uh, questions are welcome.
Thank you, Dr. Chan, for your informative presentation. The developments of charging infrastructure in China is really rapid. We are impressed with the statistics you include in your slide. China government have applied many effective strategies to promote the charging infrastructure's installation and operation. And it seems to me that we also set the same challenges in development of charging infrastructure in Vietnam. So we can learn a lot from your experiences on this. Thank you for joining us. And now we are welcome the question from the audience. À, với à, phần trình bày của tiến sĩ Chen thì chúng ta đã có được một cái nhìn tổng quan về việc phát triển cơ sở hạ tầng chạm sạc tại Trung Quốc với tốc độ phát triển rất là nhanh chóng và chúng ta cũng thấy là ở Trung Quốc thì cái những cái thách thức và những cái cơ hội thì chúng ta cũng có à, thể học hỏi được rất là nhiều từ những cái cơ hội và thách thức mà Trung Quốc đang gặp phải để có thể à, áp dụng cho cái à, cho việc phát triển chạm sạc hạ tầng chạm sạc ở Việt Nam ạ. Vậy các anh chị có câu hỏi nào cho diễn giả thì chúng ta có thể để lên phần chat box để chúng ta cùng trao đổi ạ. Vâng, 